Good afternoon, students. My name is Ms. Pavlicek, and welcome to our Wild Wednesday on February 224. We are here today to learn about a fascinating animal named the American alligator. Alligators are really fascinating, especially because they are not found here in Burlington or in our state of Massachusetts or even the Northeast. So of course, first we'll talk about what kind of animal there are. they are. We'll look at their parts and function. We'll meet our alligator. Um, and then we'll learn about all the fascinating facts and interesting things about this animal. So to get started, alligators belong to a group of animals that we call reptiles. And just like with all animal groups, there are certain characteristics or clues that tell you what a reptile is. And right here we have them. I'm just going to go over them really quickly because um, we've gone over this before in our Wild Wednesdays. So all reptiles have what's called a backbone, which makes them a vertebrate. They are also cold-blooded, which remember does not mean their blood is cold. It means that their body temperature rises and falls with the environment that they are in. All reptiles breathe with lungs. Take a deep breath in and out good job they lay what's called leathery eggs and alligators definitely lay leathery eggs they also have dry scaly skin we'll talk a little bit about that skin and their babies look just like their parents so a little bit about reptiles now we'll move on talking a little bit about where we find alligators and I have my trusty map of the continents here. Alligators are found in two different areas. Now, here in North America, where we live, alligators are found in southeastern United States, from North Carolina on the coast, all the way down to Florida, and over to Texas. So we don't have any alligators up near in the areas where we live, um, only down south where it's very, very warm. There is one other species or kind of alligator that's called the Chinese alligator that's found in China over in Asia. And that animal, the Chinese alligator, is severely endangered. That means there's not many of them around or left. So um, if you ever travel over there, you might be able um, to see one or in a zoo or museum, but our American alligators are nice down south. Now, what kind of habitats do they live in? They're found primarily in fresh water, things like rivers, lakes, streams, marshes, and swamps. Now, when you think about alligators, there are two different kinds or sexes of alligators. We have male versus female. And you might see this board behind me. Um, the reptile group they belong to is called crocodilians. There's alligators, crocodiles, gharials, caimans. Those are some other reptiles that are similar that all belong to this group, crocodilian. Now, if we started our crocodilian over here, and we travel all the way over to this American alligator sign, that is about eight feet long or 10 feet long. And that is about the length of a female alligator. And males get a little bit bigger, about 10 to 12 feet long. So really neat, smaller females, bigger males, and they can reach up to 1,000 pounds. Amazing. Nice. So we're going to pull out our alligator now so you can meet him. We are going to talk about his parts and the jobs they do. It's going to be really hard for me to hold the alligator and hold up my signs here. So if I can't hold up my signs now, I'll review at the end of our class. Are you guys ready to meet our alligator? Are you sure? All right. He can be quite the grumpy gator. In fact, most gators are grumpy. I love gators because they're grumpy, they're very protective of their environment, and they are grumpy just like things like crabs and lobsters that pinch all the time, and I just love animals that are grumpy. So, okay, here we go. Maybe I'll put the cooler up here, um, and hopefully, oh, he's getting big. Now, this alligator we've had for almost three years now, and um, 
he came from a rescue called Rainforest Reptile Shows. And those are my friends in Beverly, Massachusetts. And they take in animals from all over um, this state and other states. Now, you cannot have an alligator as a pet. It is illegal to own one. Of course, who would want an alligator that's eight to 10 feet and is very strong? But we have a special license that we're allowed to keep them here. So I hope you enjoy meeting him. Oh boy, here we go. Oh, hello, Grumpy. Hello. He's climbing right up and out. Whoa. Wow. Now, this alligator had a name last year. His name was Kulaki. Woo. Grumpy Gator, here we go. So this is a defense mechanism. He's thrashing his strong muscular body to try to get away from me. And that's usually what he does when I pull him out and then he calms down. Um, you'll see he is about three and three and a half feet from nose to tail, which is pretty cool. Just gonna move his cooler back so we can see some of my materials. Now, every year we run a Name the Alligator contest, and this is a contest that is unique for second grade. So if you are in second grade, over the next few weeks, your teachers will be sharing a form with you to name the alligator. And we will be announcing the winner in the middle of March on this live stream, and you will get your name and picture in the newspaper and hopefully get to meet the alligator that you named. So keep those names up in your head and maybe you'll come up with something neat. Maybe not something like Chompy or Bitey or Alley. Those are typical names that people give alligators. Come up with something unique. All right. Now, the first thing I want you to look at is his skin or his scales. Aren't they beautiful? Now, their skin or their scales is very dry unless, of course, he's in the water. And each little scale, showing you the ones on his back, kind of look like a little square. And the name we have for those scales are called scutes. Can you say that? Scutes. And their scales or scutes are made of the same stuff our hair and fingernails are. It's called keratin. And it's a nice little protein and it gets very strong and hard and it helps to protect the alligator. In fact, their scutes are like armor. And look at the scutes on top of his neck. See how tall and pointy they are? And in fact, when I hold the alligator from the top, it actually hurts my hand because they're so sharp. And if an animal were to try to eat this alligator, don't worry, I won't eat him. Um, he would get a mouthful of scutes and those are very sharp and he wouldn't want to eat them. But you know what? There are lots of humans that do eat alligator down in the South. And in fact, humans like their scales and their skin so much that they make boots out of alligator skin. They make coats out of alligator skin. And let me show you, they make purses and pouches out of alligator skin. You can see those scutes right on this purse. And this purse was illegally confiscated because in the 50s and 60s, the American alligator was endangered. There weren't very many, very many of them left. But over the years and the laws protecting them, there are plenty of American alligators down south and people do still hunt them for food and other resources, just like we use chickens and cows for our resources. I personally have only eaten alligator once and I didn't really like it. It was kind of like chewy chicken, um, not my thing. Um, don't worry, I won't eat you. I love our alligator. Um, but that's a little bit about his scales or his scutes, that body armor that he has. Now, another thing about his skin is the color. I want you to look at the top of the alligator. Notice the color and the pattern. Look at the bottom of the alligator. It's got this cool little scute right here that's dark. But what do you notice is different about the top of the alligator? versus the bottom of the alligator. Yeah, they're two different colors. Dark, light, dark, light. It's like I'm dancing with him. Dark, light, 
dark. Oh, he's closing it. Is he going to sleep? rock a bye gator in the science center. Just kidding. Now, when an animal's coloring is different on the top and the bottom, we call it counter shading. Can you say that? And look at this animal here. This is a shark. Sharks also have counter shading. You'll notice the top of the shark is gray or blue, and the bottom of the shark is light. Now, what do you think? Why do animals have counter shading? Any ideas? It keeps them safe. It keeps them safe by helping them camouflage, blend in. Now, if this gator was in a swamp or a lake or a river and was swimming, and you look down into that dark, murky water, his scutes or his skin are dark, just like the water would look because you're seeing through the water to the bottom. But if something was below the gator, looking up at the light, bright sky, like another alligator who might eat this one, he wouldn't be able to see the gator because the light color of the belly matches the brightness of the sky. So counter shading is a neat way to camouflage. All right, now we're gonna start way up close to his head. Now the other thing that they use those dark scutes for is when they bask in the sun. That darker color helps them absorb the heat because they are cold blooded. We're gonna zoom in on this alligator's head. Their eyes are extremely beautiful. You're gonna see a little tiny slit and a nice shiny eyeball. And they have a special eyelid, not like our eyelids, it's clear to help them see in the water. It's just like having goggles. Now I'm gonna to have to tuck him under and hold him up high like this. And I want you to see, I'm gonna poke him in the eyeball. Sorry, Kulaki. Um, not on purpose, kind of on purpose, but I want you to pay attention to see if you can see that clear eyelid that's like a goggle. Oh, there it goes. It doesn't go from top to bottom. It goes from the corner out. Let's do it again. Oh, he's got it half closed already. Let's see, here we go. Ready? Oh, there it goes. It just opened one last time. There it goes. So that special eyelid that goes from inner eyelid to out, it's clear, is called the nictitating membrane. Can you say that? Nictitating membrane. And it's just like having built-in goggles. He can cover his eye while he's swimming, stay protected in the water, and when he's attacking or eating his prey, it helps protect the eye. Sharks have them, frogs have them, Owls have them. Pretty neat, that clear eyelid that they have. All right. Now, the other thing about his eyes, notice where they're located on his head. Are they on the sides of his head? No. They're located directly on top. Also on top of his head is his nose right here. See if I can tilt him down. You have one nostril and a second nostril. So their nose, where they breathe, that's connected to their lungs, and their eyeballs are right on top of their head. And this is so they can stay submerged in the water and just poke their eyes and their nose up to see and breathe. And what they do is they lurk. Lurk is kind of like creeping. They swim very slowly and they lurk in the water with their eyes sticking up and their nostrils and they sneak and they sneak and snap! They grab their prey with lightning speed. Now his nostrils and those eyelids help to protect their nose and their eyes. Now the nostrils have little flaps, you can't see them, but when he swims, he can cover those flaps so he can swim and not get water up his nose. Kind of like when we pinch our nose, the alligator has flaps that close his nostrils, kind of cool. But those are all great ways that the alligator can sneak up or lurk for its prey. 
Now, what about ears? Do we see any ears on this alligator? What do you think? Well, we don't see any ears like ours, no ear lobes, but let me show you where his ears are. Right here in front of my finger are these little slits, kind of like a dark line. And that is his ear opening. Now, why doesn't he have a hole or big ears like ours? Well, what happens to you when you swim too long or too much in the water? You get water in your ears. They get clogged. By having little tiny slits or lines, the alligator is able to keep water out of his ears, but he can still hear fairly well. So pretty neat that they have those. Now we're going to talk about the most dangerous part of this alligator. Which part do you think that is? Yes, indeed, his mouth or his jaw. I would like you, I'm going to tap on his nose. Oh, look at that snapper. I used to watch a movie and they used to have alligators and the guy used to go, look at those snappers. Now you might think he's smiling, but he's actually in protective mode. Look at that mouth. The first thing you're gonna notice is how wide and big it is. So wide and big. He has the strongest muscles in his jaw to snap down with strong pressure. And once he snaps and once he grabs, he cannot let go. Well, he can, but he won't. He has such strong closing muscles that once they close, it's very hard to get them open. So that's really neat. Now, the other thing about it is look at those sharp, pointy teeth. Alligators have about 70 to 80 teeth in their mouth. And you'll notice they're all sharp and pointy, no flat teeth. And what's neat about an alligator's teeth is when one falls out, another comes right in. They can get over two to 3,000 new teeth in their lifetime. Pretty incredible. So as they use those teeth, if they break or fall out, and he actually is missing some teeth, I'm not going to point to them. That's in how I end up getting bit. Let's see if we can open again. Oh, boy, there we go. He has all those sharp teeth. Now, of course, those sharp teeth are there to protect him and to grab and bite his prey. Now, what kind of things does an alligator eat? Well, an alligator is what we call, just getting down to my signs here, an alligator is what we call a carnivore. Can you say that? Carnivore. And that means that he eats meat. Alligators will eat things like fish. They can eat a turtle and snap right through the shell. They eat frogs, birds, baby ducks, things that swim in the water. And the neatest thing they can eat are mammals that come to drink at the water's edge. And I'm going to explain to you how they know something is drinking at the edge of the water. Now, if you look really closely on this alligator's mouth, what do you see that's all over his top jaw and bottom jaw besides the teeth? Do you see all those little dots? Those little dots have a name. They are called ISO pores, just like we have pores or holes in our skin. And those ISO pores are there for a reason. What they do is they can sense motion or movement. They're like little sensors. And what the alligator does again is he swims and creeps. And he creeps with his eyes and his nose above the water. And what he can do is he can sense with those little dots, those pores, an animal drinking up to a mile away. Because when the animal drinks, it makes ripples or vibrations in the water. And he can sense those with those little circles, not with his ears, not with his eyes. In fact, they don't see very well, but they use these pores and they slowly lurk and they creep. And when they get really close, the animal drinking the water doesn't even know a lunge. He lunges and grabs the animal with those sharp teeth. He drags the animal into the water and he either drowns it 
or he does what is called the death roll. Because when you only have sharp, pointy teeth, you cannot break up your food and chew it. So he has to swallow it whole. So if he pulls a deer down into the water when he's a grown adult, how does he break that deer up? Well, he turns his body in a circle and upside down and he thrashes and he thrashes and he thrashes and he breaks the bones until he can eat it, which is really neat. So they do that death roll. Some adult alligators can go almost two years without eating food if they get a big meal. But typically, they are opportunistic, meaning they'll eat whatever they can get whenever they can get. They even eat other alligators. Yikes. Now, that powerful jaw and all of those. The other thing I wanted to show you inside his mouth, which is really neat. Here you go. He has that big pink tongue. And you'll notice you cannot see down his throat. Can you see down his throat? No, it almost looks like it's closed or shut off. In fact, gators have a special part called a palatal valve. And look at this picture. You can see it's like a big piece of skin. And what that palatal valve does is it closes up so that they can not swallow water while they're swimming. And it aids them a little bit while they're eating. So they have that palatal valve. Now, the other neat thing that's in their mouth that's really hard to see, it's called their glottis. And it's way down. Now, this is a picture where you can see down the alligator's throat. You can't really see it too much. But the glottis is a special body part down in the throat. And they use their glottis for two things. Number one, it helps them to breathe while they're eating their food. Snakes have it too. It's kind of that round tube in their mouth where the tongue comes out. So it, they use it to breathe, but the other thing they use it for is to hiss and grunt and growl. They have very loose skin on their neck, in their throat, right under here. And when the gator is feeling territorial or wants to attract a mate, they will hiss or grunt or growl, and they use that glottis to make that noise. Now, sometimes he hisses, but you can hiss. Not today, but there's that throat underneath. And if you've ever seen a big, big whoop male alligator, you'll see that they kind of, their throat, oh, he's making noise. Uh, he doesn't do it that loud anymore. When he was young, he used to do it all the time. But they use that throat to vibrate to make those noises. Now let's move on to his legs. You'll notice he's got two front legs and two back legs. And look at how muscular they are right here. Lots and lots of muscles. Let's do some exercises. And one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Lots of long muscular legs for swimming. They can walk. They can climb. They can run. And they can even jump short distances. Their legs are almost similar to our legs as far as all the different things they can do. Now, besides having those legs, they have little toes here. Let's count. One, two, three, four toes on the front. Oh, nope. Sorry, right here. Five toes. Let me switch hands because this side's a little easier to count. One, two, three, four, five. Oops. Wait, let me see if I can have them do a high five. High five. So there are five toes, one, two, three, four, five on the front, and one, two, three, four toes on the back. The other thing you'll notice, there's something in between their toes. What is in between their toes? Let's take a look, see if I can get this foot nice and close. Oh, look at that. What do you see in between a couple of the toes? That's right, you see webbing. And alligators have webbed feet. And those webbed feet help them to swim. They're like a big paddle and they help them to move. You'll also notice that at the end of those toes, they have some claws. The claws aren't super sharp, but they are pointy and they don't have claws on every single toe. This toe doesn't 
and these three do. These two don't, and these three do. So they have three claws in the front and three claws in the back. And the claws are there to help them when they're moving or walking around or getting up over something, um, you know, in the swamp or the marsh or wherever they are. Um, and they are also used to dig. And we'll talk about why they dig in just a few minutes. Now, the last thing we have back here is the gator's tail. And it is very muscular. It's like very strong and it's very long. And they also use this to swim. It's almost like a rudder. They can turn it to move left or right. And they use it to, as almost like an extra flipper to help propel them in the water and away from something that might eat it. Now, it also is a fat reserve. They store lots of fat besides having muscle so they can survive areas or times when there's no food around. And again, remember, almost up to two years some alligators can go. So they store all that fat in their tails, kind of similar to our leopard gecko that we met earlier in the year. Now, I told you that they like to dig. Now, alligators are what we call a predator, meaning they are at the top of the food chain. They eat lots of things. But there are some things that eat alligators. Um, birds will eat small babies, bobcats, raccoons, snakes, and other alligators. But for the most part, um, they are predators. And then, of course, humans eat them, too. Now, one of the other reasons they use their claws to dig is when they build their nest. Now, baby alligators hatch out of little leathery eggs like this. And when the alligator builds a nest, let me show you. Hold on, I have a picture. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. All right. An alligator's nest looks like this. And the nest is lined with sticks and brush and mud and sometimes leaves. And I collected some of the materials here that they might use for their nest. They can lay anywhere between 35 to 50 eggs in that nest. And then they cover that nest and all of that earth and material helps to heat it up with the sun. It incubates it. And this is the most cool thing about alligators. If you are a boy or a girl, alligator depends on what temperature your nest is. So if you are hot or 93 degrees or hotter, your egg, you end up being a boy. If you are 86 degrees or cooler, you end up being a girl. If you are between 86 and 93, we don't know what you're gonna be, but you end up being a boy or girl. So the boys have a hotter temperature egg and the girls have a cooler temperature egg. I think that's really, really neat. Now, depending, um, it takes about anywhere around two months for the eggs to incubate and hatch. And what they do is they call to their mother and mom will come and use those claws to undig that nest and the babies will come out. And mom will protect her babies for quite some time because they do get eaten. And in fact, here's a little model of an alligator with the babies. They ride right on the mom's back and they live in little groups called pods. P-O-D, pods, and she will protect them. And you might have even seen pictures of alligators that have their babies in their mouth and protecting them that way. An alligator will grow about one foot per year and their lifespan is about 50 years if they have a long life. Little life would be about 35 years, but they can live up to 50 years, which is so cool. Now, the last thing I want to talk about before we go is people always say to me, Miss P, how can you tell an alligator from a crocodile? Now, first is where they live. So most alligators live in the Southeast United States or China. And crocodiles are found in South America, Africa, and other areas. So they live in different places. Next, I'm going to show you two posters. This first poster shows you a little bit about how the alligator and the crocodile's snout or mouth is shaped. So if we look at our alligator, it's shaped like 
a U. Whoops, down here. It's shaped like a U. It's wide. Here's the U. It's wide and it's kind of short. So here we have our U-shaped alligator. Now, crocodiles have a pointier snout. It's like a big V almost, or an elongated U. It's a V, and it's very narrow or thin, and it's a lot longer. So you can tell by the shape of their mouth. The next way you can tell is by looking at their teeth. So alligators, when they close their mouth, their bottom teeth are hidden. They fit into little holes on the roof of their mouth. Um, they're called sockets, and you cannot see the bottom teeth. So let me show you. Oh, grumpy gator. See when he closes his mouth? You cannot really see his bottom teeth. Maybe a little bit in the front here. There's one or two you can see. But the bottom teeth fit into the top. The crocodile, their lower teeth are always visible everywhere you see. And they have these two large teeth that stick up from the bottom that you can see on the sides of their mouth. So that's really unique. The shape of their mouth, where they live, and how their teeth fit into their jaw or their sockets. Well, boys and girls, unfortunately, we are at the end of our time. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about our American alligator. And don't forget, second grade, take a good look. Think about some good names because we are going to hold our contest. And I can't wait to hear what you guys come up with for the Name the Alligator contest. If you have any comments or questions, if you'd like to tell me, my email is P-A-V-L-I-C-E-K at bpsk12.org. I look forward to hearing from you. I hope you have a great rest of the day and rest of the week at school. I miss you all, and we'll see you next week for another Wild Wednesday, which I believe will be Mr. Musselman speaking about some robotics. So see you then, and I hope you have a great day. High five. See you later. Bye. <laughs> Take care, boys and girls. Bye-bye.